5.03 p.m. This is Julia Chalfont, Chair of the Finance Committee, and I am opening the Finance Committee meeting for May 25th, 2021. Do you all want to open a um, select board meeting? Yes. This is Dave Wolfram. Uh, we're going to open the, uh, the select board board of health meeting on May 25th at 2021 at 5 p.m. All righty. So the agenda tonight, um, first, I have a couple of admin things I wanted to talk about. Um, from a schedule perspective, the goal tonight is to review all the budgets that are left, all the ones that we have changed, and then get into the, um, the warrant articles and get through as many of the warrant articles as we can. Um, the zoning board ones seem very complicated and long. And there's a presentation tomorrow night for the zoning board thing. And then, um, Casey, you're here. This The warrant has to be posted 14 days before. I So you guys changed this at some point, I think in 2019. <laughs> OK. We've been going back and forth about this all day long, council and Barbara and I. I think it was changed. I am prepared to have the board post the warrant on the 27th, which is Thursday. But we, I think we can, based on the vote that I read from Barbara, annual town meeting can be posted seven days prior. Isn't that right? I believe that's correct. I believe that's correct. So if, and the reason this has come up is it's come up with a question from um, someone outside and we went back and looked and I was operating on 14 days and then Barbara corrected me, but then I got confused about something I saw in an email. So we've been frantically working on the warrant, Brenda, myself, Dan Graves and Lisa. And when we get to the warrant, I have a couple of things that might make it a little bit easier, but you're right. The zoning articles do take time. So I have most of the zoning pre-meeting information complete. Um, Anna Lee Wolfke has been helping, Wolf cool has been well, helping me with that. Um, so I would recommend you come to the session tomorrow if you can, even if it's individually. Were you gonna try to post a meeting for Thursday, Julie? So I think I did. So that, that's the next step is that Somehow the meeting, we were supposed to have a meeting posted for tomorrow night and that I don't think got, I don't see it. I don't think it got posted. So we can still go to it because it's an open meeting, but we can't have like meaningful discussions as a quorum, as a finance committee um, at that meeting because it's not posted. I did post today, I think, a meeting for Thursday evening. If you guys are, I just posted it and then if we can't do it, we'll unpost it. Um, but if y'all are available Thursday evening at five um, to try and do the zoning board. And I felt more comfortable doing that than to try and do the zoning board articles tonight with no prep. Okay. Um, what I can do while you guys start talking, I can pull up some of my information stuff and I can... Okay. I could show if you. If we could get that. through them tonight, that would be okay. Um, the other thing is, I couldn't find the zoning bylaws online. Sometimes you have to search Google first. <laughs> okay. I have to say, this has happened to me once or twice. Um, it's E code 360. I can see if I can find the link for you. Okay, because when I went to ECODE 360, all it pulled up was two changes to the zoning bylaws that happened, I don't know, a few years ago. Julie's accurate. I have the same issue. When I pull that up, there are two changes that we've made at Tamp Town Meeting, but no zoning bylaws at all are listed. So you can't find anything that's Chapter 179? 179 is there, but the only thing that it lists are... Um, Oh, I forget if you, if you, it's a special town meeting, article seven and special town meeting, article six. That, that's all that is listed, nothing else. Oh, wait, I'm sorry. You, there is a link you can click on. I'm sorry. It's hidden down below. Oh, I was going to say, there is a link there. 
Yep. Okay. There are, the so I did talk to Barb about that because I went looking for something and couldn't find it. So she has an entire codification project that was ready to go before the fall. And she held off until the um, approval came back from the AG's office. But now that we're sitting on another five zoning bylaws, it costs about $1,500 a pop to do this yep. or thereabouts, depending on how much you have. So she asked me about it the other day and yeah. it doesn't make sense to spend it twice if we can help it. So it just seemed like it was an expensive thing to do, but I can talk to her about it again. That was actually why that change in 2019 to post the warrant came up because I couldn't find it online. I just found- has his hand up. Yes, thank you. Uh, I, I had trouble finding it too. I went through and I was trying to do a comparison that, but uh, uh, myself, I, I really think that the finance committee needs to spend some time with this because from what I read of the draft and a couple, I have actually several questions about this, but my biggest concern is that uh, from what I'm seeing, this could have a major impact on our uh, new growth revenue for the town. And I'm very concerned about that. And uh, there's a lot of questions. One, I'd like to know, one, who, who generated this language to start off with? Hey, Jeff. Or is, um, or is it a... Or is it a boilerplate language? Julie, go ahead. Let's hold these questions until we're actually talking about, yep. now we're just talking about talking about the articles, but we're, we're not actually covering the articles yet. I agree with you. I have, I have the same kinds of questions, um, but I'd like to hold those until we get to actually reviewing the articles. Um, Okay, well, I just don't want, I just don't want to leave it to last minute and all of us, all of a sudden, we're trying to scramble on the annual town meeting floor, trying yep. to figure out what questions we're going to ask and how we're going to uh, try to present this, because there's some serious issues with that language. I absolutely For agree. For the town yes. of Deerfield. Yeah. Yes. I think, yep. Absolutely. Um, so just poll of people can finance committee people can you make a meeting this thursday 5 to 7 p.m i cannot okay jeff upton yes okay john Paturik, no i'll be down the cape or on the way down there oh, i'm just okay. not going to be available um i can Jim? but it would mean some rescheduling but i can if if there is a meeting i will be there Okay, um, John, how about next two? So if we can make changes to the warrant, like just the finance committee approved, doesn't approve, can we meet next Tuesday? Casey? I can. Yeah, sure. <laughs> uh, Jeff, I'm You're gonna... muted. Yeah, sorry. sorry. <laughs> Assuming we're right that seven days is adequate time, and I asked Barbara that after she left, today i think we could okay i think we post a meeting just in case plan for the worst and hope for the best that's usually how i approach it i can make it john Pareski. okay i sort of um, assumed we were going to have one next tuesday <laughs> so we are going to have one next tuesday i guess um i will post that um instead of thursday in, I, I guess instead of thursday um Will you be meeting at five, do you think? Normally? What? You meeting at five normally? Okay, thank you. Yep, at 5 p.m. next Tuesday. Um, so I guess what happens with the warrant is as many articles as we get through tonight, then we get to post the finance committee, approve whatever thing, and the other ones just won't say anything about finance committee. And you can give those recommendations at town meeting if we are unable to do that. Okay, all right. So with that, um, oh, the last question I had is for tomorrow evening. I'm not presenting anything, right? Yeah. Okay. 
<laughs> You're good. <laughs> yep. Hey, that meeting's um, June 1, right? I'm sorry to interrupt. June 1, yep. Okay, so with that, we're ready to um, review and approve minutes from last week's meeting, um, May 18th. I sent those out, right? Make a motion yeah, for yes, May 18th did. minutes as okay. written. I'll second that. All right, any comment? Nope. No, okay. Um, John Pereski. I'll abstain. I didn't get a chance to look at them. Sorry. Okay. John Pachurik? Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfant? Aye. That's 401. That passes. So we're ready for budgets. We start with 122.5110, select board staff salaries. Make a motion we approve this uh, for two hundred twenty-five thousand one hundred sixty-seven dollars. I'll second it. All right. Any discussion? Nope. Okay. Um, John Pereski. John Pereski says aye. Yes. John Paterik. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. That's five zero zero. That passes. Next Julie. is one. Do we, do we do we have to say anything that we're revoting it? Does it have, does that have to be mentioned? Because it's it was previously been approved. That's just a question. I don't, I don't think so. Uh, my only question is, Julie um, or, or anybody, does the select board also need to vote them tonight as well before the meeting? Do we want to do them in tandem or, or just wait and do it all over again? It's a, I don't want to interrupt finance, but. Carolyn, you're muted. I apologize. I was hoping that you wouldn't mind if we just voted them right away with you. With, with you. Be speedy. Oh, we can be quick. We, got a lot to do. we can be quick. I but, make a motion to approve the select board. Um, salary line. Staff salary. I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Aye Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion passed 300. Okay, Julie, go next. <laughs> 135, 5110, accountant salary. Make a motion we approve this for $56,358. I'll second it. Any discussion? Nope. All right. John Paturik. Aye. John Pereski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes 500. I make a motion that we approve the count salary at $56,358. Second, Trevor McDaniel. Further discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carries okay. 300. All right. Next one's assessor salaries 141, 51, 10. Make a motion we approve. No, wait, wait, wait. I'm sorry. Assessor's admin assistant 141, 51, 10. Sorry about that. Make a motion we approve the salary for $66,026. John Pereski seconds. I was writing Jeff already because he always says any discussion. <laughs> uh, John Pachurik. Aye. John Pereski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chelfman. Aye. That passes 500. I, I make a motion we approve the assessor's um, admin salary for 66026. Yeah. I'll second that, Trevor. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion passed, 300. 
All right, next one is 145-5110, clerk treasurer salaries, collector salaries. Make a motion to approve the budget line of for $190,517. I'll second it. Any discussion? Nope. All right, John Paterk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye, passes 500. I make a motion that we approve the clerk treasurer um, salaries of $190,517. Second, Trevor McTaniel. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. All right. Jeff has Next. his hand up. Oh. Somebody has a hand up. Jeff. Jeff. Do you have your hand up? No. Okay. okay. Um, next item is 172 5400 open space. Make a motion we approve the open space committee recommendation for ten thousand dollars. I'll second that, but with discussion, I just want somebody to refresh my memory on the ten thousand dollar request. So it was twenty to make a new open space plan, and then they decided to use ten thousand dollars this fiscal year, and so they reduced it to ten. So we had voted twenty before, and now we're reducing that to ten. That's right. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that I had that right. Thank you. And I think five thousand were requesting from district local technical assistance from the FERCON. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Wow, look at that wind. Any other discussion? <clears throat> okay, so it's been moved and seconded for $10,000 for open space. Um, John Paterk. Hi. John Pareski. Hi. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That's 500 passes. You guys don't need to vote this one, right? I, I'm, I think we do because it's reduced. Even though it's reduced. Do you think we need yes, to? Yes, you need to vote the reduction. I, I make a motion to approve the open space um, committee um, request for $10,000. I'll second Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Okay, we're moving on to section two. The next one is 210 5110 police payroll. I'd like to make a disclosure. Since my son's a chief, there's a potential conflict of interest. So, what I'm going to do is abstain from any discussion about his payroll whatsoever. And I'm going to abstain from the vote also. All righty. Thank you. I'll make a recommendation that we move the uh, police payroll 210-5110 of $932,657. John Pareski seconds. Any discussion? All right. John Pachurk. Abstain. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Uh, aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 401. Next one is 241-5110. Oh, I'm sorry. Yep, that's uh, okay. Board. Sorry about that. I'll make, make a motion to approve the police payroll of uh, nine hundred thirty-two thousand six hundred fifty-seven dollars. I'll second that, Carolyn. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Dave Wolfram, aye. Motion carried three zero zero. All right. Now we're ready for two forty-one fifty-one ten. Make a motion to approve the line budget for $165,181. I'll 
I'll second it. Any discussion? Nope. No. John Paterik. Aye. John Kreski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. That passes 500. I make a motion we approve $165,181. Second that, Trevor. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried, 300. All righty, now we're moving to section four. The next one is 422-5110. I make a motion we approve general highway payroll account for 422-5110. $543,532. Second. I'll second it, Jeff. Oh. Jack beat you to it. All right. Any discussion? Nope. Nope. John Paterk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. Passes 500. Zero, zero. I make the motion we also um, approve the highway department payroll. 543-532. I'll second that for Trevor. Daniel. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. <clears throat> okay, the next one is 422-5110. I can motion we approve the salary, the uh, item for $280,050. I'll second it, Jeff. Okay, so the change in this one is not the um, payroll that we've been voting all along. This one is the um, adding the leasing of the equipment right. um, to this one. For 20000 yep. Yep. Any discussion? Yes. Nope. Is that the equipment we get reimbursed by Eversource? No. no. Oh. This is the uh, Wacker Newsom lease. Go ahead, Kevin. If I could. Um, okay, so we were looking to replace this piece of equipment and we looked at our finances this year. We recognized the fact that we couldn't afford the, uh, the full 105,000 at once. We got creative with a municipal uh, loan where we, we pay um, uh, basically it's $20,000 a year. And at the end of the five years, we own it. At least. Um, sorry, I had to do the math real quick. Um, I, I wanna say it's probably about a $6,000 um, cost for us to do it, but there is a clause in there, let's say arbitrarily year four, if the world comes to an end, we have no money whatsoever hand it back no harm no foul no extra cost to us um so that is definitely uh put into the it'll be put into the contract um and that that's where that extra twenty thousand dollar came into did did the cipc approve the purchase but we decided recommended yes they recommended, recommended i'm sorry recommend. nobody actually they did. approves so yeah. that's yeah. the annual town meeting they blessed but, it okay yeah thank you no, thank you. Jeff, Jeff has his hand up. Go ahead, Jeff. No, I didn't. Sorry. Oh, is it in the like participants list thing? Yes. Oh. I don't know. I don't know if only I can see it. Um, no, I can see it. Oh, oh I okay, just cool. It out. Yeah. Okay. All right. Um, so John, we talked about this at the, when we went through the whole capital thing, it was a hundred and something thousand, 102, 105, something like that. And we talked about taking it off the, you know, not funding it as capital and going, okay. All right, any further discussion? Nope. All right, so it's been moved and seconded for $280,050 for general highway expense. John Paterk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 500. I make a motion um, that the select board approve the general highway expense of 
$280,050. I'll second, Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. <clears throat> Motion carried 300. Thank you very much. All right. Um, the next item is in section 5, 512, 5110. Make a motion we approve the budget for $39,336. I'll second it. second it, Jeff. I think John Presky got that one. Any discussion? Yep. I don't care. <laughs> John Patrick. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. That passes five zero zero. I make a motion we approve the budget for $39,336. I'll second that, Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram, motion carried 300. All right, next one, section six, number 610 Tilton Library. Make a motion we approve the budget for Tilton Library for $194,105. I'll second it. John Pareski. All right. Any discussion? Nope. No. John Paturk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. All right. Jim Cambius. I will abstain on this one. Julie Chalfant, aye. That's 401. That passes. Next one is 630 um, I make a motion that the select board oh, approve sorry. budget okay. line of 194105. I'll second, Trevor McDaniel. Any further discussion? Yep. Hearing none, all those in favor? Carolyn Ness, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Dave Wolfram, aye. Motion carried 300. All right. Now 630-5410. Make a motion we approve the budget for Tritown Beach expense for $18,160. I'll second it. John Pareski. So this one needs discussion. Um, the person from the Tritown Beach Commission came to us a few weeks ago and said that they wanted to do repairs and maintenance instead of hiring people because they're not going to be open this summer. She has, this is my recap and somebody will correct me, I'm sure. She has resigned from the commission. She had some family issues come up and just couldn't do it any longer. Um, there isn't anybody, somebody else should be presenting this. There is a, here's my understanding. There isn't anybody else from the commission who's prepared to come forward. I don't know that there's a plan for this funding at this time. Um, I would also say I don't think there's any member from Deerfield representing this board at the moment. I, I think I believe at our last meeting we accepted two resignations. Yeah, you did. Correct. Yeah. I had the same concerns. I had the same concerns and that and I'm wondering where we go from here as far as this budget. Uh, my understanding is that there were there going to be a couple of people from Waitley that were going to be on committee, but even with that, that doesn't really uh, represent the town of Deerfield. And so, do we really fund this or not? Yeah. So I, I have a kind of a dumb question, but who has the authority to spend money on a budget? Go ahead, John Peter. Okay, from what I understand, this Tritown Beach was set up to include Sunderland, Whiteley, and Deerfield. When it was set up, Sunderland refused to sign on when they initially started. So we called Tritown Beach, but we only have two towns. The basic breakdown is 84, uh, correction, 80%, 20%. It's like 82 versus 18% uh, or something. Now, the board is split where we have three members from Deerfield, three members from Whiteley. Mm -hmm. However, you cannot get out of, and you cannot fund this budget without giving a one-year notice. Since we can't give them a one-year notice, we have to budget this 
and we have to fund this for one year. And what we should do is put out an extra effort to see if the select board can appoint three people to represent our best interests. That's what we should do. Um, the only question I had on this is if they're going to use this money for projects, this, um, if they're small items, it's okay. But, you know, if this was a, a big, big item or a bigger item, it should go through capital improvement, I would think. But I'm just putting it out there. And I guess my question is, and I hear what you're saying, John, and I appreciate that input because obviously you've been dealing with this for years. But I guess my question would be, at what level do we have to fund this? I mean, this was a, this was a request from members uh, that were on that committee for the town of Deerfield. Now, has that changed? And do we have to level fund this? Or can we reduce the dollar amount to at least somewhat fund it? Seeing how we're not sure what's going to happen, I, I, and I'm just throwing that out because I really don't know. It might be wise to fund it for the total dollar amount. I'm I'm not sure. So last year, actually, they were closed, and we only funded it at six thousand or something. Right. And I think just oh. this is Trevor. My two cents was I I believe that if I'm not mistaken that I think some of the funding right we were thinking well if it's not going to be open but maybe next spring it is um, before before June 30th so we'd always want to make sure that we had lifeguards funded and you know gatekeeper and that kind of thing um, so I, I don't think they could take the the money that we have set up for the the lifeguard stuff and then just go and spend it on whatever they want. I think, I, th I do think we need some representation on there and I'd like to find a way to do that. But I also wouldn't want to not fund it just knowing that maybe by the following spring, we would have, um, you know, I, I think, I do think it's important to have a place for the, for our kids to swim and learn how to swim and that kind of thing. So I, I do think it's worthwhile doing, I, I, I recognize in talking with, um, a selectman in, in Waitley that they really want to find a way to bring new life into this place and I think they have a couple new members from Waitley and they have some ideas so I think it, it, it behooves us to get some representation too so I think we should fund it at least for the lifeguards and the stuff to have it operational if it's not this year it's next spring but just my two cents I guess. Well the rationale last year the reason there's 65 14 last year was just that that it was going to be closed last year but if it opened this spring that was would be what they would need to fund it until june 30th and, and they also hired kids last year to work on the weeds mm. um, and we pay insurance every year for that location as well oh, okay jeff has his hand up no, my, sorry about that, but my computer is showing I lowered my hand. Now it's saying I raised it. So <laughs> I must be reversed. I'm sorry. Sorry, Alex. Okay. I'm good. How do you raise your hand? Under, under uh, reactions along the bottom next to share screen. Right. Thank, thank you. Under participants. Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Um, so if, if this is funded, then who has the, then that board can just spend the money, right? Correct. Right. Can they spend it even if there's no Deerfield representatives on the board? That's correct. Because that's the agreement we have with Whiteley. We have to have a, we can have up to three members. They can have up to three members. It's a 50, 50 split on voting and my recommendation is we should vote this, even if we don't like it, we should vote this because I know that one thing that Whiteley has up their sleeve, which they have different things occasionally, is to take over Tritown Beach. The worst thing we can do is get out of this thing and do nothing. I thought too is that the things they want to do, which is get the weeds out of it and then do some work on that bathhouse, kind of summertime's the time to do that. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Waiting until fall town meeting or whatever doesn't make sense from the perspective of getting the work done. Yeah. Yep, I agree. 
Anybody else have thoughts? Jim or John Paresky, any comments? Um, well, I mean, there is the question then of, okay, if Waitley takes it over, what do we lose other than expense? You lose your 80% interest, which means you become a non-owner. Right, and after that, which you is have not nothing. in our town. I do know that one of the selectmen from Whiteley is looking at trying to take it over from Deerfield by eminent domain because it's in Whiteley. And we can't allow that to happen. We don't have any other place for kids to go swimming. It's a good place to teach swimming lessons. It's a place that was built up because of Route 91 where kids can go swimming down there, learn to swim. So you have less deaths in a town of Deerfield. So to me, it's a worthwhile project to try and fund it. And we fund it with very little money. That my makes a lot of sense. My biggest John. problem is that we still have to we still have to get somebody to volunteer to go in there to try and control our eighty percent that we're paying. Yep. It's it's actually a seventy-seven twenty-three split, but close. Yep, I'm close. <laughs> Any other thoughts on this? Have we publicized like in FCAT or not wherever, yet? Wherever we publicize a desire for people to be on boards and committees, has that been publicized? No, not yet. We just received their, um, I think our last meeting last week or so, we received the resignation. So we do need to do that, John. Thank you for point, pointing that out, sure. All right, I'm not hearing any further discussion. There's been no motions to change the amount or anything. So it has been moved and seconded um, for 630-5410 Tritown Beach at 18,160, um, which is Brenda, two and a half percent if you take the 2020 number and add two and a half percent, then two and a half percent, you get to 18,160. Yes, that's correct. Okay. Any further discussion? If nope. they're going to, yes. If they, Go they're going to use the 18,160 for maintenance. Uh, sorry about the phone in the background. Uh, shouldn't the budget reflect that instead of showing it as lifeguard wages? Yeah, we don't actually, Brenda, you have a better answer. <laughs> well, we, we don't have any direction, John, um, from them. So we didn't have anything to plug in there because we don't know what they're going to spend it on or how much anything is going to cost. Um, if they open in 2023, there will be labor costs. Um, but Julie and I just for lack of having anything from anybody to go by, we just did what we did, adding the two and a half percent to to both of those years to get to where we are here with this one. And my understanding too is that even though these line items are laid out, they aren't binding, and that the people who have authority to spend to that budget, they can pretty much spend it on whatever. Um, as long as they don't exceed their their line item during the fiscal That's year. Correct. Yep, that is correct. Obviously, I'm going to stop them if I feel like it's something that isn't appropriate. That's that's my job. Um, but if it seems appropriate and reasonable, then I'm going to put it through as an ex as an expenditure. As far as I'm concerned, John Pachert, uh provided some very insightful uh, information. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I understand what he's saying, and I'm good with this. Uh, I think time to move it forward. I agree. And I think we should just do it under the hopes with our fingers crossed that we can get somebody to represent Deerfield. OK. Any further comment? Nope. Doesn't sound like it. John Pachurik. Aye. 
John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes five zero zero. I make a motion to approve the eighteen thousand one hundred sixty dollar budget for Tri Town Beach. I'll second that motion, Trevor McDaniel. Further discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor. Hi, Carolyn Ness. Hi, Trevor McDaniel. Hi, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried three zero zero. All right. Next one is six thirty four fifty one ten. Make a motion to approve the blind budget 634-5110 for $51,849. I'll second. second it. <laughs> I'm giving that one to Jeff. Any discussion? Yes, I have one question. Yeah. On the line budget, it says two Antonellas data higher, 623-00. Says fiscal year 21 at 83%. I thought the way these longevity raises were, you either had five years or 10 years or 15 or 20 or 25 or 30, but that means you get 10 years at 100%, you don't get 83%. So the question is, how did we get 83%? That's prorated based on the number of hours you work per week uh, to, compared to 40. So she basically works 83% of 40 hours every week. Okay, that's what I want to know. Thank you very much. Thank you. Any other discussion? Nope. All righty. John Pichard. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. That passes five zero zero. Next one is seven fifty one fifty nine. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. It's okay. <laughs> Make a motion to approve the Recreation Department Director's salary at $51,849. Um, I second that, Carolyn. <laughs> Any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn Ness. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. Thank you. Now, 751, 5900. Make a motion to approve the interest on maturing debt for $130,917. Second. So I'll just speak to this real quick. Um, the only difference here is that we have actual interest numbers for both the, um, the uh, Deerfield uh, Elementary School roof and the uh, New England Natural Bakers repurchase uh, of the land. But we also received uh, just yesterday um, information for the clarifier. And we are just um, taking out that loan for a month and paying it off in July because we'll have phase one money available for, um, for the rest of the year. We don't know what phase one is going to cost us. I'm hoping that we'll be able to reduce interest yet one more time before town meeting, but right now this is the best information we have. I well, knowing that you did it, I feel confident. Us. <laughs> Thank you. I thought we had in our maturing debt to pay off that clarifier. We do. We're paying off the clarifier, but we could have taken that out for a year or we could have taken it out for just a few days to get us into the next fiscal year. So we just decided to make it the short 30 days, get it done over with. Yeah, got it. I understand now. Any other discussion? Nope. All righty, John Pachurik. Aye. John Koreski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. That passes 500. Make a motion to approve the uh, interest on maturing debt at $130,917. Um, I second that. Carolyn? Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion carried 300. All right. 
Now we're ready for, oh wait, there's two, Brenda, do you want to comment on these two that were the senior center and the wastewater? Yes, yes, may I? Um, so there were adjustments to pay for the senior center director, um, her assistant, the program um, assistant and the outreach coordinator. But the outreach coordinator and the program assistant are handled through grants. So that had no effect on the financial statements and the senior center director um, did get an adjustment, an, an equity adjustment. We plugged that into her budget, but since I don't know if Sunderland or Waitley have voted, but they all had it set for the original amount. Um, Christina gratefully, uh, graciously uh, adjusted one of her line items to bring the budget total to the same total we originally had. So no vote required for that. Um, the other one was the wastewater treatment plant. Yes, we had some uh, salary adjustments there, but I adjusted that through their revenues. So it's a wash um, because it's a, it's a balanced budget. Um, the only other one is the, um, the EMS. Uh, South County EMS uh, isn't, I think Casey mentioned it last week, they haven't actually finished the salary survey for them. Um, if there are adjustments that need to be made, it's possible that Zach could just incorporate it into the current budget. Um, I don't know, did you confirm that with him today, Casey, or did you get that chance? I did. I confirmed it with him. And Great. he's finishing up his meetings with the consultant. They're circling about around to it this week. Okay. All right. Um, and then uh, other than that, we had the only other thing on my on my budget summary to approve is the prior year bills, but we'll do that with the um, uh, votes on the warrant, right, Julie? Yes. Okay. Um, do you want to talk about your overall revenue detail and where we ended up with free cash and stuff at all? Uh, we could sure do that. I, I have a question for you. Do you want to, um, Casey, I don't know, was Kevin waiting to do that reserve fund transfer request? Oh, yes. Should we, should um, we Julie, if you check your email, I'll I sent that. it to you yep. about five minutes right. before the meeting. We yeah, and then that way he doesn't have to move on any longer. Yeah. Yes, yes. So, sorry about that. Um, no, no, I was about to raise my hand and ask that question. <laughs> Thanks, Brenda. Do you so, have any that you can share? Yes, I do. Um, okay. Brenda, can you share it? Uh, let me uh, I mean, open I it up. I have it. I just have to hold on. Give me two minutes then. Um, My computer's being really, really slow right now. Well, it doesn't like say, multitasking. Let me, let me share, Casey. Um, all right, can you see that? Yes. 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 Okay. So there's a request for $25,000 to cover um, some shortfalls in the green infrastructure projects. Um, apparently, these are problems with uh, utility and <laughs> that we did not anticipate. If we don't go ahead and pay for them now, uh, we're, we're subject to lose about $200,000 in that grant. So the way we figured we could handle that was to put it through Kevin's budget since it's kind of a DPW kind of thing. Um, and so we're asking for a reserve fund transfer request for 25,000 to cover that. So move. Could you, could you, uh, I'll second it for now and then discuss. Go ahead, Jeff, discuss away. I, I'm just curious, what are the items that we're covering here? So we're covering With this 25,000. There are several things. It's mostly tree boxes, but there were some shortfalls in the Kelleher Drive culvert. Uh, project. So there's two MVP projects. One was tree box installations, and those are uh, stormwater management systems. And there were several that were designed to be put in around the center of South Deerfield. And in the course of both design, the, the finalizing the design and installation, we discovered there were unmarked utilities that nobody could help us figure out. 
And if you touch them, they become yours. So we didn't touch them. Uh, but we also had some design problems that we had to mitigate. And throughout the course of that situation, um, we had a situation, we had a, we had to work with the engineering team to reevaluate where to put them so that they fit the parameters of the grant requirements. And then when it came to Kelleher, there were some cost overruns that related to, and Kevin can chime in, but that related to the install and restoration to finalize that. And in fact, it's not final yet. It hasn't, there's guardrail and a couple of other things that need to be done. So what we're asking to everyone to do is approve the transfer, because if we don't finish the projects, then we stand to lose what was granted to us through a reimbursement that MVP requires. So we outlay all the money and then we request reimbursement for it um, to make the town whole. Plus we already had money allocated toward it, but these things were not anticipated at the time that we did the allocations and sent in the application. Is there anything you wanna add, Kevin? Yeah, if I could. Um, just so you know, obviously, here's my here's my major disclaimer. Um, this is nothing to do with my budget. Um, this is very strictly, like you said, because of the uh, the MVP. Um, we did have, like she said, we had some issues, um, and we moved just so there's complete transparency here. Twenty four thousand dollars was taken from the project of Kelleher and brought over to the tree boxes because to help cover the costs. With that being said, so far I have done uh, 21,400 in chapter 90 money and I've outlaid about another 5,800 for prepping of the, um, for prepping for paving and I paid for the paving. So guardrails are going in soon and then there's gonna be more work that's gonna have to be done after that. Um, there is, uh, some retainage on the original contractor, um, and we'll see where we go with that. But I need to make sure that we are covered all the way around because if we don't do this properly, uh, we lose, we have the chance of losing a couple hundred thousand dollars, which obviously we don't have. And again, the long story short is we don't use it, it, it just goes back. Um, but I'm going to say pretty confidently the 25,000 I'll end up using all of that. Thank you. Does the amount of the grant change at all? Is it actual costs or is it there's a grant limit? And there was a grant limit. There was only so much money that they granted for this for this project. Um, and because of there was cost overruns, there was things that that would change. The design changed. Um, there was more brick put in, but they removed. Um, some other uh, materials to try and offset the cost. I'll, I'll be honest with you, Noons, who, who's doing the work there for us, absolutely fantastic to work with. Um, he will bend over backwards to find any way of trying to save us money and, and get a, a quality product. Um, if, if we can do more work with this guy, he'd be absolutely phenomenal to work with. Yep. Um, I saw his caveat, he's doing the tree boxes. <laughs> right, I, yeah. I, saw, I saw his spreadsheet and he is 100% transparent. There is no smoke and mirrors. Here's where it is. Here's where I'm saving you money. I'm giving you a better product over here. Uh, instead of stamped concrete, he's putting down brick. It's going to look really nice there. I think it's the beginning of streetscaping. Um, I, I, this is money well spent, I believe. And then what, what's the balance in the reserve fund? Oh, uh, that's a good question. Um, I forgot it's that much, earlier. right? It's darn near 100,000, but. Yeah, I, I want to say that it's still at, uh, it's got to be at 93. Is that what you said? Close. Because I think we used, uh, we used 6,000 earlier. Yeah, for four thousand. No, you know what? We've only used uh, five thousand, so it's still at ninety-five thousand. Okay. 
Any other discussion or questions? All right, so it's been moved and seconded that we transfer $25,000 from the reserve fund to the general highway projects fund. Any discussion? No. Well, the other uh, thing is yes. we gotta make sure that we authorize the chairman to sign this. We authorize what? The chairman assigned the bottom line. Being the chairman, you gonna have to sign that. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'll bring it to the annual meeting. See how. Right. Okay. Go ahead, John. John Pereski. What happens to the here. reserve fund that's un unexpended? Does it go back in the free cash? Correct. Thank you. Any other discussion? Um, so does the, do we need a separate vote for me to sign the bottom line? No. Okay. All right. Um, you could do a friendly amendment and add and have the chair sign at her convenience. Say that one again. Well, it already has my, or says chair finance committee. Yeah, it, it's okay. I'll, I did this with the last ones when I saw Julie last time. I just had her sign them. Okay. She can sign them after the fact. So we're good. No further discussion? Nope. I'm not seeing anybody. All right. John Paterk. Aye. John Pereski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. Um, that passes 5 zero, zero. Thanks, Kevin. Thank you all. Thank you. Okay. Now I think we're ready for the warrant, right? Okay. One quick question, Julie. Yeah. Before we start the warrant, uh, do we know now that we've gone through the budget, it may take a little while to figure this out, but do we know after what we just voted where we're going to be as far as a percentage compared to last year for the town as far mm -hmm. as what our overall percentage budget percentage increase is um for just the um, omnibus budget it is yes uh 3.87 percent okay 3.87 percent all right that's correct thank you brenda sure any other sort of general budget questions or any questions on the revenue detail sheet? AC, you had your hand up. When she's done, I'll ask. <laughs> Go ahead, Casey, you're up. <laughs> so what I was going to do, if you guys, once you guys have gone through this, I want to show you a couple of things. And tell you what I worked out with council and the moderator in regards to the warrant. So when you guys are done going through your reports, just yell at me. I think we're ready for the warrant. Nobody seems to have any questions on the reports. Yeah, let me just say this, that um, you'll see that your budget report has a total on it and your revenue report has a total on it and they agree. So that means that I put all the funding sources into the revenue uh, sheet so that you can see that. I've tested it. I know that it all is, is accurate. So uh, at least at this point, I will get you an updated one um, now that we've voted everything, but I just wanted to let you know that. Free cash keeps going down year after year. Scary. Yeah, it, it, it leaves us with just 193,000 in free cash, but that's 193,000. Not a good trend. No, it's not. I agree with you, John. <clears throat> okay. Would you like me to show you what I talked to council and the moderator about? Yes, please. Okay. Okay. What you are seeing is my screen. 
probably too much of my screen, but okay. So this is what you have in your hands or what you picked up at the town hall was the version of the warrant that I finished over the weekend. And I knew there were going to be outliers that needed some tweaking. And Brenda and well, first Lisa, Lisa and I talked on Friday afternoon about trying to put as much information into the warrant like we did last year to facilitate town meeting, but also being as clear about funding sources and other information as we could. So I queried Brenda or Lisa and Dan and talked to Brenda as well about making a change that you will not see in the paper warrant that you have now, but you will see in front of you. What we did was because we had like things that are in some cases boilerplate, in other cases, they just flow well together. We went from two consent articles to three. And so the first consent article is general actions. And I has, still haven't come up with a title for it, but what is represented here is a, an article that can be voted through one vote that um, identifies the reports of officers, votes the elected officials compensation, acknowledges gifts. And you'll see that Brenda has given me the information, the monetary gifts from various sources, the pledges toward the school roof, which just follows down here, the pledges received in the last 12 months, the donation toward the school resource officer program, towards the police motorcycle, towards police radios, and towards the elementary school lunch program. So we're acknowledging a lot in here. Um, and what we tried to do was make that very clear. And then again, this is a general action, the library interest vote. So we all know what that means. You're taking the interest earned and splitting it between Tilton Library and Frontier Regional School. And then acceptance of grants. So there's this general article to accept grants. There's two general articles for both the select board and the assessors to be authorized to sign contracts for up to five years. And then a general article related to the spending limits of the revolving funds. So that was a consent article last year. This year in our, we discovered that the next article could also be a consent article. There were three bills that came to light that were unanticipated over the past several months. And they relate to projects that were actually um, took place in other fiscal years. So 2019, two in 2019 and one in 2020. And those bills we did not receive until recently. So in order to pay them, because we're out of a fiscal year, we needed to put them on a warrant for free cash. Now, because it's an out of fiscal year or past fiscal year bill, it requires a certain quantum majority vote. But what I was asked to do was identify the source. And so this was going to be from free cash. Brenda and I, and I had already talked about that. And I think it was already in your reports. What Lisa, our town council and I discussed was actually identifying the one motion and then the items, each item for payment. And um, the moderator, Dan, looked at it and sent an e we all sent an email to each other and he said he was fine with that. So that was the framework that changed slightly in that second consent article. Plus it was named. Um, one of the things that sometimes I think people find it easy if they can see a name on, a, on an article to identify what it is. In article, article three, Casey, can I just interrupt you? I'm sorry, I just interrupt you for a minute. What was that bill for seventy nine hundred dollars? Seventy nine hundred and twenty dollars. That seventy nine twenty was an unant. It was a bill that was never received in 2019 for the Mill Village Road Upper Watershed Study. We yeah, see a what, transfer was was requested, but no bill was ever paid. What? So what was the watershed outcome? I don't remember that study. I don't, that I don't know. I know it happened in 2019. Um, 
if there was a report put forward, I don't know where it is, but I know we have to pay the bill. There's a contract for it. So uh, who, who are we paying the bill to? Tie and bond. I think it relates to the upper watershed study that was done. It wasn't an MVP grant. This was not a grant. This was a special project. Kevin has his hand. Um, Does it have to do with the dump? I mean, you know, the transfer station? I don't know. Kevin? I, I can send you the Kevin. contract, but I don't know what it, it's not as clear to me as it probably would be to you. But we, we did a fair amount of research in the office to see if we could find anything. And I don't see, I see a contract for it. I don't see a lot of information on it. Um, the second one of that is the 6200 is an unanticipated bill. It should have been paid for peer review. Um, right for the planning board i remember that and one then the third one well to some extent well i won't pontificate and the third <laughs> one was i think the town building assessment survey was never paid so this was an fy 2020 bill that we literally just got and i had enough time to throw it on the warrant but one of the things that we wanted to be clear about is when you're doing unpaid bill or unanticipated bills, prior fiscal year bills, it requires a different majority than other types of votes. It requires essentially a super majority. So one thing that Dan Graves was concerned about was if we did too many consent articles or things that didn't seem to go together, it would be confusing for town meeting. And I agreed with them. And so did Lisa and Brenda. So that's what we came up with to fit that. I, I just, um, the, I would just like a little more information on that $7,900 bill. Cause that does not ring any bells to me. Me at neither. All. Me neither. I, I, I don't remember anything unless it had to do with, you know, the wells and stuff at that point. Or, or it might've had something to do with that. Uh, when we did the culvert. Kevin has his hand up. Let's let Kevin answer. Oh, go, great. Kevin, go. Sorry. Whopping Road. That's what I thought. Whopping, Whopping road. road. Okay. Thanks, Kevin. I think that needs to be clarified, though, a little bit. Yeah. What would you basically all we did was identify the I, bill I think itself, you, the reference on the bill. I know, but you could just say Wapping Road and, uh, you know. No village slash Wapping Road. Yeah, Wapping Road um, landslide. This has to do with the silt coming down from the landslide. That's a, uh, that, you know, they did do some work on that. And so if I do detail for that one, I need to do detail for the other two. Well, it's just a, well, never mind. I think we can, re we can explain it. So in the third article, it's very different from what you see in your warrant. And the reason is, is all <laughs> of those special appropriations, they each had an identified separate article, reserve fund, OPEB, out of district placement, and the 350th are all special appropriations. So by pulling this into a consent article, we're still identifying the same information that was in each individual article, we're putting it into the ability to vote it all at once. And so the you'll notice I say at the beginning of the article to see if the town will vote to transfer from free cash the following special appropriations. And each one's identified in the amounts that's, that have been approved through the budget process. And at the, at the end, it's take any action relative there too. So what we did was we took those special appropriations and combined them into one article, which has been approved by council and by moderator Graves, which is important. He, he's been very clear about wanting things to flow, but also things to be easy for people to understand, which is why we're trying to throw tables and stuff that we don't normally or hadn't normally put into a warrant. This started last year with COVID. Um, article four is the classification compensation plan. And I waited to throw this table in until tonight because I wanted to make sure everything was voted. Um, the next article is the omnibus budget. And you'll notice these are all separate votes. 
And then we have the sewer wastewater treatment plant enterprise fund. Again, I was waiting for the vote to be taken before I threw the table in. But <coughs> as we get to article seven, that's the South County EMS enterprise fund. All that information, none of it changed. So all that information was put in. So that's ready for the public to review it in the warrant. Um, and then article eight is capital projects. And I don't know if you, this didn't change from your warrant that you have on paper. Essentially, and Julie, to your point, Julie sent me a comment over the weekend about the fact that the asphalt side, sidewalk repairs looked confusing to be, mm -hmm. to have that 503,000 appear in two places. <laughs> so what I, <laughs> what I was trying to do, Julie, was That's sort of go thing. slow. create a flow of information on that. And I started out, I guess in past warrants, usually free cash is separated from other funds. And I looked at it that way when I was developing the table. And so it went free cash to special revenue funds to then stabilization funds. So Julie's comment was, it looks confusing if you have $503,000 in two places. So after Brenda and I talked about it, we put C above just to reference it. Does that satisfy your request, Julie? That makes me happy. Yes, it's easier that way. Yeah. So basically what you see here is you see the approval, you see the requested amounts in the first numbers column. Then you see the approved amounts that, that each committee took votes on and it gives you, you'll see subtotals in the free cash section and subtotals in the SCEMS rent stabilization section because there's more than one article or there's more than one project. So essentially this is trying to pare down into what was voted a couple weeks ago, the projects that you all approved. Okay. okay. And then community preservation. Thank you, Brenda. She puts this lovely table together, tables. And she does all the motion, so it's ready to go. I just split things up so people could see it. So you see the project request. And this year, we only had one. You see the annual revenue appropriations in the amounts requested plus the percentages. And then the community preservation reserve balances as of the last vote at special town meeting in October, correct, Brenda? That's correct. Okay. So basically we used to provide this in the handout. Now we're trying to give it to people it's in anticipation best. of review of the warrant. They always ask, so it makes sense to put it there. Yeah, especially the, the reserve balances. Everybody mm -hmm. wants to know that. And so Article 10 has changed since from what you've looked at before. And it literally changed at like four o'clock this afternoon. <laughs> um, the intent of the article didn't change, but how it's explained did. So this is a change of use and confirmation of appropriation for the land on North Main Street that we utilized Community Preservation Act funds to purchase and plan to develop. But not, what we're doing in this article is confirming what happened. So you're confirming each previous funding vote. Yeah. And changing the use of the actual land, or the actual use of the land. And the reason we have to confirm and we have to change the use is, and you'll hear this tomorrow, everyone, if you go to the, the info session, essentially through a lot of hard work on, on, by officials of the town, we could receive a $932,000 grant. Yes. $932,950 yes. grant. In order to accept and spend the funds, 
very similarly to what happened last year with the park grant, we are required to have certain confirmation and language in this article. In other words, we have to change the article again because a land and water conservation fund grant is we've received preliminary approval for that. It's the state has approved our application. The application has been sent to the National Park Service. And so what you see in red is the changes that council made this afternoon after she and I talked. The biggest problem that both council and the moderator had with this is it's confusing. Mm -hmm. But really all we're doing is confirming the amounts that we had previously um, appropriated. And all that 100% of that funding has to be oh. confirmed because the grant requires it. Okay. We are also changing the use of the land from general recreational purposes to park and outdoor recreational purposes. And that's a requirement of the grant. That so the sense. biggest problem that they had, Dan and Lisa, was an explanation of what all this means. It's very confusing for people to see this now for a second time. So the italicized information below the article is meant to explain the progression of how we got here. And I worked on this, Lisa worked on this, John worked on this. This is what we've come up with. And I think this is probably what's going to be put into the warrant okay. because they really do want people to have an explanation of how we got to where we are. And you know, acknowledging that $932,000 could be really useful would be helpful, I think, for people to, to be able to digest it as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, John Presky had his hand up for a second. Hi, John. I put it back down. Okay. <laughs> uh oh, he either gave up or I answered his question. Actually, that little red paragraph pursuant to the request of the Commonwealth, that's very helpful. Yes. Yes. I agree with Julie. That's, that's really, I think that, so if you read it, some of it is just background and that was what they wanted. They sort of wanted a timeline. So I came up with a very brief, it, it became brief over a couple iterations of this. But this is what council put in, that red um, italicized paragraph is probably the most useful piece of information in there. And I'm gonna to talk to her about that, whether it needs to be any more than that. But I do think that people need to understand the conditions of use and the permissions are required as was necessary with the park grant. So it's a, there's a correlation that she's trying to get everybody to. And then article 11 is, so what I did was I transitioned from the general things that are related to financials in the beginning, the budget articles, this article, which actually is a confirmation of funding article, which is why it's sitting where it's sitting in the warrant. And then there's, we transition to the police officer age waiver and then we go into all the bylaw articles. So the police officer age wa waiver is basically to see if the town will vote to submit a home rule petition to affect an age waiver, wager, age waiver for one of our police officers that continues to serve in, his, in the capacity that he served in since before he retired. I've known him for a long time. Um, and using language that actually the legislature by and large gave us. And it was submitted by the, at the request of the chief to, allow, to continue to allow Mr. Sebelia to work for the town. Okay, now we start. So do you want me to go into bylaws or not, Julie? Um, let's go through. You guys want to take votes and I'll show up. Gender neutral. Um, yeah, maybe we should go back and discuss and vote everything you've discussed so far and see how far we get. And then, um, okay. 
Let's hold, your, hold on to your stomachs and close your eyes while I scroll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So a question for the finance committee folks. Are you guys comfortable like with taking article one as a whole with its whatever six or seven yeah. parts or do you want to vote each little part? Do it as a whole. Good. <laughs> Good answer. Can I ask one question of Casey? Sure. The uh, warrant says Commonwealth of Mass Franklin SS it says to either of the constables Either means you have two constables. Since we have three now, the word either has to be changed. So I suggest you change the word from either <laughs> to any. Good. You know, that's no simple. One actually said that to that's, me, Jack. Pardon? How about, I'll put any of them. Perfect. That's all I'm asking for. <laughs> perfect. I never even thought about it. Thank you. Only an English teacher would bring that up. <laughs> uh -oh. I I have my hand up now. You do. Right on. Um, the package. I I don't know whether I picked it up today or I printed it yesterday, but there's an article twelve that talks. No, not on. No number talks about Frontier Regional School Capital. We You've got an old one. This evening. You've got an mm -hmm. old one. So it's not going to be in the warrant? No. OK. Thank you. Yep. All right. We have a motion for Article 1. This is John Paturk. I'd like to make a motion that we approve Article 1 Exactly as is printed on page one of 41, page two of 41, and page three of 41. All right. Do we have a second? I'll second it, Jeff. Any discussion? Oh. So I actually have a question. Um, Item H says revolving funds. It has a spending limit, recycling 20K, parks and rec 75, and planning 25. Um, I went back and looked. The report I have was as of April 30th. So the recycling balance was 22,235. Parks and rec balance was 31,000, and planning balance was 6,700. Um, how does this, how do you come up with spending limits? Is that? And those spending limits were actually developed, uh, I don't know, three, four years ago. I remember going through those in detail, but it's based on what you think you might spend. It has nothing to do with what the balance is today. Okay. You're going to take money into both of those. It just allows you to spend up to that maximum amount. Um, does parks and recreation usually spend 75000 No, it's, it's, it's less than that, but it's not a tremendous amount less than that based on the income that they receive. Oh, Jesus, and Mary and Joseph and the Pope. What's that? Oh, I thought I heard somebody. Somebody was blessing. What's that? Somebody was blessing. Oh, okay. Um, so that's, that's where those numbers come from. Um, planning board, it just depends on how much work, work they're going to be doing, how much, how much income they're going to be taking in and how much. So we just allow extra so that we don't have to come back and revote. Okay. Thanks. Any other discussion on any of this? No. All right. So it's been moved and seconded that we um, approve Article One as printed in our handouts. Any discussion? Oh. No. John Pachurik. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfant? Aye. That passes 500. Article 2. Make a motion we adopt or pass Article 2. Uh, all on page 3 of 41, 
exactly as it is printed. In a second. So the problem, we need a second and then we'll discuss for a sec. I'll second. I'll second it. Okay. Um, the problem is what we have printed is not what's in the warrant, right? There's a little change to this one. Casey, can you share again? Yes, I'm sorry. I just got cut off. I just sent it to Brenda. Can you share what I just sent you, please, Brenda? I don't have it yet, Casey. Um, okay, hold on. So I can fix that. I can fix that. <laughs> so you didn't get an email from me? I did not. All right, because I sent it a second ago. Huh. I can get to the internet. I cannot get my computer to actually okay, well, hopefully <laughs> to actually find the, the meeting for some reason. And I'm not sure why. Um, I wonder if it didn't send you what it was supposed to send. Yeah, I can't even get to my computer now. Well, while they're working on that, I think the only change was like to see if the town will vote the following. It said from free cash or something in that first line. So while we're waiting for this to show up, is there any other discussion on this item? Oh. No, me neither. All right. But I'd like to be able to see what we're voting before we vote it. Yep. No, no, I'm working on it. Right. I still don't have it. Casey, but Casey, do you have it saved in the S drive? I do. You tell me where I can pull it up if you want. Okay, look in the S drive. Mm -hmm. Team Docs. Um, team Docs. It's BOS Team Docs. Oh, I gotcha. Think. Yep, got it. Right. Hold on and, a and I can, I'm looking it up too here. Um, it's in team docs, go to town meetings. It's all the way at the end of the list. <clears throat> oh, meeting okay. checklist. No, that's not it. Under town meetings, you'll see a bunch of fists. You'll see years. Brenda, yep. if you look at 2022 or Trevor, if you look at 2022, yep, click on that, ATM. go to ATM. Yep. And then within that folder, you'll see a warrant folder. I see it. Look for the one that said, look for the item, the document that says 526-2021. You got it, Trevor? Yeah, I've got 525-2021 here. Okay, great, at 519. Oh, yeah, I see it. I it's think it's 526. I got it, I'll share. Thank you, Trevor, sorry. Sure. No problem. I'm supposed to have high-speed internet in the next two months, <laughs> crossing my fingers. So I will go down to, if everyone can see this, I'll go down to Article 2. Is that correct? Looks good. Yep. Oh, yeah. That was our unpaid bills. All right. So we have a motion and a second to approve Article 2, Consent Article, Unanticipated Prior Fiscal Year Bills. Any further discussion? Nope. No, John Paterik. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Abstain. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant. Aye. That's four zero one. All right. Article three is also different from what we have printed in front of us. We can see the whole thing on the screen there, though. We have a motion for Article 3. Move that we approve consent Article 3 for a reserve fund for $100,000. All right. You're going to do it. Um, so they've changed Article 3 from what we have printed, and it includes reserve fund. OPEB liability out of district placement in 350th celebration. 
all four of those are now combined into one Article 3. Basically, old Articles 3 through 6. <clears throat> yes, right. exactly. So do you want a new motion? Yes, please. All right, I withdraw my old motion. I make a new motion that we approve uh, Article 3, which includes reserve fund transfer, OPEB liability trust fund, out of district placement, 350th celebration. I think that's it. Yep. I'll second it. I'll second that. All right. Um, it's been moved and seconded. Any discussion? Oh. Doesn't sound like it. Um, John Paturk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chelfin, aye. That passes five zero zero. We're ready for Article Four Classification Compensation Plan. I'm actually. Didn't we already vote this last week? You did. Voted the plan, but not the article. Are we comfortable voting this without um, the table? I am not. I would like I am to not see either. the table. Yeah, okay. me either. All right, we're going to skip this one. The next one is very awkward because the omnibus budget, which we just voted, but we haven't seen the final thingy. And I would really like to see the final printout before voting this one as well. Um, I agree. Um, Julie? Yeah. Could we go back to Article 4? You actually had the classification compensation plan in the materials that you received last week for the meeting that you voted it at. But you want to, I see, you want to just and make We didn't sure make any change. Oh, we didn't make any change. No, we didn't no. make any change. So we do have that. Um, where did I put it? So I, th I think, I don't know, I think you can, you can vote that because it was just a strict 3% increase on each of the steps. You're right. And we even had the, the chart in there with that, those numbers in it, right? Yes. Um, plus, yes. plus the equity adjustments, though. Well, that has nothing to do with it, John. It's the compensation plan is still the same. Yep. Okay. Yep. Um, so the memorandum that we had last, that was just last meeting, right? Yes. Um, Correct. The table that's in that on pages four and five is the FY22 compensation recommendation. That included the 3% across the board. Um, increase with no other changes, right? That's true, Casey? Or Brenda? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. So this is the table that will be in this warrant item. Right. Um, Finance Committee members go, have that. Go ahead. To go back to John's question, but we were supposedly, there were gonna be some adjustments uh, made to some, some uh, staff. Shouldn't right. they show up? in this table they no. wouldn't no uh, because the table is is just strictly the table it, it just tells you these are the grades these are the steps for these type of positions it doesn't tell you where everybody's at on it so the way the equity adjustment was made is that if a person needed an equity adjustment they were just moved up a step but the right. uh, yes correct. compensation for that step didn't change they were just moved to a higher step and that's how they get their raise. And, and uh, follow up, a very quick follow up is that this does not refer to anything for FY23, correct? Right. That's right. correct. Yeah. 
Okay, I'm good with questions. Thank you. Okay. So if we're happy with that, we could use a motion for Article 4. A move. Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? Nope. Everybody's happy with this? Okay, I've lost my list. Um, with, with the omnibus budget, vote, I John. Huh? Oh, I go ahead. Never mind. We're ready to vote, John Paturk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes five zero zero. So omnibus budget, Brenda. Um, I could actually show you what you voted and what will actually be presented in this. Would you like me to do that? Sure. I stopped yeah. sharing. Okay. You could take over. Um, in our handouts, in our little envelopes, is that that budget expense detail? Um, it wouldn't be exactly the same thing. Let me. Um, Could the only change be the FinCom review column? Let me get this up here and see. You're right. It wouldn't be anything different from from what you received, other than uh, the votes, and the votes will now show that it agrees. I'm trying to pull it up. There we go. Okay. So um, you can see that we have the general government. And um, if I go back up here, you'll see the columns are FY21 appropriated and then FY22 requested and FY22 recommended. And the FY22 recommended is your final column on the right, and that is what you voted. So you can see that with the general government, I'm just going to go to the totals on these so you can see the general government agrees between what was requested and what you voted. Yep. And then public safety, same thing, what was requested, what was voted. Okay. Education, what was requested and what was voted are identical. Okay. Public works, was what was requested and what was, I, what was voted is identical. Human resources, what was requested and what was voted identical again. Culture and recreation, same thing. You'll see those two numbers agree. Debt service, those two numbers agree. And then we have the benefits, those two numbers agree. And then down here you have the total omnibus of budget and it's $15,955, excuse me, $15,955,706. dollars All right. Any questions on what Brenda is showing us? Do you want a motion on this one? There is not a motion yet on this one. Well, I said, do you want one? Yes, please. Um, I think we should look back at what the wording of them. Um, okay. I'll stop my share. Okay. And bring the warrant back up. Sure. Now we're ready for a motion. Make a motion we approve article number six on the bus budget as presented. All right, actually yeah. article five. Number five. Can we not say the amount, the total amount of the omnibus budget in our vote? Yeah, we can. Like, I suggest we do that, it just makes it more clear. 
So that's 15 million 955 706. So I guess we have to amend the motion, right? I'll move. Okay, I'll second the motion to approve the ominous budget for $15,955,706, Article 5. Article 5. And that puts us at about a $600,000 increase over last year. Uh, a little bit less than that, 582,000, yeah. I think, right? Or what? Well, I don't remember what it was. I think it was 594,301. Yeah. Oh, okay, there you go. So just a little less than the 600,000. All right, any further discussion? Nope. All right. So it has been moved and seconded for the omnibus budget article five at $15,955,706. Roll call vote, John Pachurik. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Um, hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna abstain. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye, that passes with 401. We're ready for Article 6. Do we have that information written down somewhere? I could certainly um, share my screen of the uh, wastewater treatment plant summary. Um, it's the same as what we actually have in our books, right? Um, well, it isn't because of the pay adjustments that were made, Julie. Oh, uh, but the totals in the um, article. Oh, no, no, no. I'm thinking about the next one, the SCEMS. You're right. Right. That, that's in there. So this is what will be in, in the warrant. Uh, in the, pretty much the same format as SCIMS. It's a little more simple because there aren't any contributions by Deerfield or um, any other town. So you'll see the expected revenues are 1,342,940. And then out of that is salaries of 305,884, expenses of 697,925. Debt service of 483991 which includes the payoff of the clarifier. And then indirect costs of 55140 and a use of retained earnings to help support that budget of 200000 We had voted something similar to that earlier in the year, but I made a couple of adjustments to the interest on the debt and then the adjustments to the salaries. Anybody have any questions on the numbers? All right, let's go back and look at the warrant again and then we'll need a motion and a Anybody like to approve Article 6? Make a motion that we approve Article 6 Sewer Wastewater Treatment Plant Enterprise Fund. Second. I'll second it. Any discussion? Nope. All righty. Um, let's vote. John Pachurk? Aye. John Koreski? Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. Julie Chalfant, aye. Five zero zero. That passes. We're ready for Article 7 for the SCEMS Enterprise Fund. That's actually the same as we have printed, right? I believe. I don't, I can't um, fit all of them. That's correct. We have it um, 
that's unchanged, right, from what we have printed except for the article number. That's correct. That's true. Okay. The motion we approve Article 7, SCEMS Enterprise Fund. We have a second. Second. Um, any discussion? So the total um, from Deerfield is 309,243, right? Yes. Okay. I didn't hear any discussion. So John Pachurik. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 500. Zero, zero. Um, article 8, Capital Projects. This also is unchanged from what we have printed in front of us. Um, but I think I see a mistake on it. Um, the, the total of the capital requests uh, in the requested column, because we took out the second edition of the asphalt uh, yep, yep. repairs, that should actually be seven hundred and twenty-three thousand three twenty-five. I noticed that when we were going through it and was going to make a note to change it, but if you want to vote that, you probably should know that it's seven hundred and twenty-three three twenty-five. I can't get in to change it right now, Brenda, so I'll have to change it tomorrow. That's fine. All right. We don't have a motion. I may like to make a motion. I can a motion we approve article number eight for capital projects for a total of $723,325. So that's just the requested, and what we actually approved was 462.118. I stand correct. It should be 462.118. We have a second. Second. All right. Any discussion? No. Roll call vote. John Pachurik. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 500. Community Preservation Fund. Okay. Keeping the wheel here. Um, this also is unchanged, right, from what we have printed, except for the article number. It's now Article 9. That's correct. Make a motion we approve Article 9 Community Preservation Fund. We have a second. Second. All right. Any discussion? No. John Pachurk. Aye. John Presky. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin. Aye. That passes five zero zero. Article ten. Change of use and modification of appropriation. So this is totally different from what we had written. Yes. I'll move. I'll second that. <laughs> Any discussion? Nope. No, all right. John Pachurik. Aye. John Pareski. Abstain. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 401. Article, what are we up to? 11, police officer waiver, age waiver. I move. Second. Um, any discussion? I have a question. So this this way we don't have to revisit this every year, right? This just waves it until he retires or something else happens, right? This actually normally you would put a normally you see a five year deadline on it. In this case, um, 
the chief has chosen to not put a deadline on it until he retires, essentially, Mr. Sebelia. Okay. I guess that's why it's broken out the way it's broken out. All right. I apologize. I lost track of who seconded that. Nobody's owning up to it. Who, to who went first? Um, John Paturic. Then I'll second it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Any further discussion? Oh. Roll call vote. John Paturic. Aye. John Paresky. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julie Chauff and I. That passes 500. Article. Where are we? Article 12, personnel holidays. So this is where we get into bylaw changes, Julie. Yep. And we started with general bylaw changes. The first one is the general bylaw talk about change. About each one as we go. So let's talk about this one and then we'll vote yep. it. Yep. <laughs> okay. So this is the bylaw change to add Juneteenth Independence Day, which was created as a state holiday last year by the governor and legislature, to the list of holidays and renaming Columbus Day to Indigenous Peoples Day. And this was recommended by the personnel board. There. Are, Right. I don't know. It seems kind of simple to me, but that's because I've been in all the conversations they've had about it. Essentially, personnel board feels that this needs to be recognized as a holiday um, as part of everyone's efforts to dismantle systemic racism. And it sends a message by the town doing this. It sends a message to everyone that we, we want to see those things happen. <clears throat> We have a motion. I'll move it. Article 12, general bylaw change for personal holidays, but I'm going to vote against it. <laughs> we have a second. Second. All right. So it's moved and seconded. We're ready for discussion. So I have one quick question. Um, does the, our number of holidays now match the state number of holidays? It doesn't. There's still state holidays that we don't have. And in some cases, I know of at least one, I think it was, um, I think it was Bunker Hill Day. Years ago, they changed Bunker Hill Day and Jack actually might remember this. I think it was Bunker Hill Day that they changed to add for the day after Thanksgiving. Um, we still don't totally match. And it, there are some places that have slightly different holidays. Out East, they have evacuation day and some places still have Bunker Hill day. So, but each town chooses mostly what's on the state holiday and federal holiday lists. And this Bunker would- day, I thought Bunker Hill day was in June. I thought it was, we're trading. Yeah, this. we, no, we're adding Juneteenth, but in the past, the town has traded holidays to yeah. fit other needs is what I was trying to get to. But our total number, so we're going from 12 holidays to 13 holidays. So we have one additional paid holiday for everybody in the town, right? Is that correct? Correct. Um, which means that um, people who would normally be working either won't be working or for like police or whatever, then we incur holiday pay for that day. Yes. Right. There, and so we too? checked, I checked on the contract with that. This is actually, FRS is about to do the same thing if they haven't already. Um, I have a question, which is why this is a finance committee matter at all, since it is a purely, you know, symbolic gesture and doesn't really involve any expenditures. There's it's a money article. Two, yeah, there, there are two answers to that. One is that finance committee um, state Mass general laws and town bylaws state that finance committee will vote and make recommendations on every warrant article. It used to say just financial, but now it says every warrant article. 
Um, so we, we are actually tasked with reviewing each one. And this one actually has financial implications because we've now gone from 12 yeah. to 13 paid holidays. Sure enough. Um, so. Uh, Christina has her hand up if you're taking comment. Well, it wouldn't be a meeting without me saying something. <laughs> um, I just, uh, speaking of that holiday, because we were trying to clarify it when we were writing up um, our calendar for the senior center for June, is that because Juneteenth is on a Saturday, um, does that mean the Friday or the Monday are observed as the paid holiday for employees? Generally in town, when there's a holiday on a Saturday, it's observed on a Friday. And when there's a holiday on a Sunday, it's observed on a Monday, if I recall correctly. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just weird because life path um who they're choosing another day yeah yeah, they're so doing told me. yeah okay but um but we're actually well yeah me, let's, let's actually go back to the discussion this doesn't pertain to the passing of the things so let's move on um any other discussion on this item i just got one comment and that is yeah. that uh i think this is ridiculous to change from columbus day to indigenous people's day and that to me is just absolutely ridiculous trying to rewrite history. So I'm voting against it, like I said. I actually have a different take on that and I'll probably get flack about this, but in my opinion, naming it Indigenous Peoples Day, this has nothing to do with finances, calls out a group of people by their race and makes an exception for them by their race. We don't have other holidays that are saying, oh, you poor person because you're a whatever. Um, and, and, and it makes me uncomfortable. Actually, I think it um, sort of counters the issues that we have. I, I would, um, it just makes me uncomfortable to call out a group of people by race when we have no other holiday that does that. Um, it, it, I find it very awkward, but um, that has nothing to do with finances. So. Well, June 19th does the same thing. But June 19th is yeah. observing a specific historical event. Right. And it's an achievement that the country made by banning um, slavery. And I, I feel like that's a, a different type of thing. It's a, but again, we're getting into politics, not into uh, yeah. finances. I mean, I just my two cents, I think it, it does. Um, I, I see what you're saying, Julie, I, I hadn't thought about that before. Um, but then we, we, we call out specific religions as well, like Christmas, um, mm -hmm. as a holiday versus but yeah, that you make a point that I hadn't thought of. Thank you. Can we can we break it down into two articles? Because I kind of <laughs> I I like Juneteenth Day, but I'm not so sure I'm crazy about Indigenous Peoples Day. I kind of agree. For one thing, when this comes to the town meeting, that will almost certainly be what happens. What does the board feel like on that? I'm voting against both of them, so I don't care. <laughs> I know. I, I would write, I would like to separate it so that um, okay. if people are uncomfortable with one or the other, then um, the other one might pass or whatever. I mean, I. Okay. Yeah, I we can do that. I no, understand. that's totally the select board's call. It's your warrant. So I can certainly do that tomorrow. That's fine. I, I'll, I just, I'll second that motion. Trevor. Any further discussion? All those in favor of splitting the Article 12 to Article 12A and B? Um, or th renumbering them. Um, um, aye, Carolyn. Aye, Chair McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion passed 300. Zero, zero. All right. We're going to be revisiting stuff in a week anyway. Um, I think we should just, since it's not no longer what we were voting on. I think we should withdraw the motion um, and skip this one and come back to it. You guys okay? okay. Yeah, so, we can do this next Tuesday too. Huh? 
We can do this next Tuesday. Yep, we'll have the same discussion again next Tuesday. Um, so, yep. John, would you like to withdraw your motion? Not a problem at all. Which John? Who made it? Okay. Sure. it me, Sorry. I withdraw it. <laughs> All right, and Jim, can you withdraw your second? Yes. All right, withdrawn. We're ready for the next one, which at the moment is number 13. At the moment it's number 13. It's the general bylaw change to make, to change the time period by which Capital Improvement Planning Committee submits their capital budget. And this was at the request of CIPC. And they had a meeting and discussed it a few weeks ago. Um, so it would, it, instead of submitting it six, is it 60 days, Jeff? Mm -hmm. Yeah, 60 days prior to town meeting. They decided they Which liked the verbiage of not less than two weeks prior to annual town meeting. The reason why the request is, is 60 days, that's two months before annual town meeting, everybody is still working on budgets. Mm -hmm. And there's so many unanswered questions as far as what's available for grant money, what's available for free cash, what's available for you know stabilization funds and so on and so forth. And Brenda does a great job trying to keep us updated, but there are some times where things are just unknown and to force uh, a capital improvement committee to try to make a one year plan and then four additional years on top of it, if you don't have those numbers, it's impossible. So, so this, we just felt as a committee that being two weeks out would be a lot more effective and we'd be able to put out a better product there instead of putting something out 60 days before and then basically having to change the whole thing as all, all the additional information comes in. And that's, that's why this is there. Jeff, I agree. I think it's a good point, but I want, does it conflict with, we have to have a hearing of the capital plan? It makes it a little tight, John, but you can still have the hearing, yeah. Okay. And remember, it's it's not less than two weeks. I mean, we could actually do this if we're done. We could actually do this a month before the town meeting. Right. It's just it's just a matter of whether we have numbers to work with or not. I mean, even right, right now, I'm not sure if all the uh, wastewater treatment plant numbers are in and those need to be plugged into your capital improvement plan for my understanding because it could affect your bond uh, company as far as bonding for the town. And we don't have those numbers as we speak. Two weeks seems really, really tight to me because the warrant has to be posted two weeks in advance and the finance committee has to vote on the budget before the warrant can be posted. Um, when, I go, when I go online and I look at the bylaws that are online, it actually says submitted no later than the closure of an annual town meeting warrant, which is 30 days, right? Yes. That's... Has that been amended and it's just not available online or? It was, it was amended. The amendments, that's, I had trouble finding those amendments myself. Um, hold on a second. Oh, I can't find it. But it says 60 days now anyways. It was 60 days and that changed, the entire bylaw changed. Was it two years ago, Jeff? It was. Yeah, it was, it was, uh, Yes, two or three years ago, the entire bylaw changed. Uh, in my opinion, not for the better, but I was outvoted, so we have what we have. Well, the 
The if only change in this portion it, is this if, sentence. If people, if people want to leave it as is, go ahead. But I will guarantee you that you won't get a good product on the on the uh, capital improvement plan. You no, just you. you're not going to be able to do it. Right, you're we, just not going to be able to do it. This is struggling. Not uh, not with sixty days prior. Yeah. This is Trevor. I completely agree with that. We have been you know constantly up against the clock and feeling like we're making people work extra when they don't need, you know, maybe 30 days is more reasonable. Um, then I agree with what Julie, two weeks is pretty tight if it's got to, you know, everything's got to get printed. And so maybe three weeks is a little bit more reasonable. Um, About 21 days. Yeah, I mean, 21 days. Yeah. Three, you, know. you know, 21 days that because I, the the two months is just or 60 days is too yeah. is way i mean we're still trying to feel our way through the budgets and i understand the two weeks people are feeling uncomfortable about so let's try three weeks yeah. we can always we can always change it again if this doesn't work and if we get more information and we can do the budget earlier then it's not an issue but it's right it's just, it, it, so many times we don't have final numbers and so, you know, it's hard to make recommendations based on, you know, how much money we have because we're not really sure sometimes. So well, at this point, if you can't, if, if nobody wants to do this, we have to take it back to capital to change the article because this was what their decision was to put forward for an article in terms of the change to that sentence. Well, we have, I think we have a quorum. We have myself, Jeff, and John Pereski. No, I'm not mm -hmm. on capital. Oh, no, you're not on No, capital. you don't have a quorum of capital. I guess not. We're, we're not, not posted, posted meeting anyway. Yeah, we're nope, not. and you're not posted. I know, I know. I'm well, just going to say. Why don't, we, why don't we send it back to capital then, see if they can meet in the next week or so and meet back right. again? May I make a suggestion? Uh, Jack Davies is a is a chair. If if that's what people think, could you please notify him? Because I do not want to step on toes there. He mm -hmm. he is the chair of that committee. Yep. I don't know that we will be able to get this done in time to post. I keep trying to get to my email to see what Barbara said about the two weeks versus seven days notice of the town meeting and I can't get there right now. Um, I can try to get in touch with Jack tomorrow and say that everyone was concerned that two weeks wasn't enough time and see if he'll hold a meeting. It's the best I can do tomorrow. On the other hand, if that doesn't work, can it be amended on the floor at the annual town meeting? Yes, it can. Yeah, it should be able to. Assuming we don't have to have a hearing about it, yes, it can. The issue okay. is whether we have to have a hearing. Right. That's what I'm not sure. That's why I asked the question. But did they have a hearing when they changed this? Yes. Okay. Yes. Well, we if have. you have a hearing, then you have to schedule it concurrently with town meeting, and they have to hold it completely separately. That's the problem. Well, we could do it before the meeting. We've had we've had um, you know boards meet be before this annual town meeting mm -hmm. before. Meetings are one thing. A hearing, I don't know if a hearing will fly because a hearing has a different um, requirement for participation. Or we approve this and see how it flies for the year, <laughs> since it's all set. What we could do is approve it and then vote it and see what happens like trevor says and if two weeks is truly i mean we could try to get done in th three weeks out or whatever yeah and, and and see if two weeks is too short all this is is a deadline and and what we have to do is and this gives us the most amount of deadline because it's right up against the wall so right. we as a group should try to you know, as a committee should try very hard to, you know, get it done at least 21 days. 
So, I mean, I don't feel that bad about saying it's two weeks. Yes, but if it's an emergent, you know, if we have no numbers, two weeks is two weeks. But if we have numbers earlier, then we can do it earlier. Right. I, I agree. Go ahead. Vote, it, vote it and then change it at the town meeting. Well, that's what we're not sure about. If it requires a hearing, John, there are hearing okay. notification requirements that we may not be able to meet. Kind of like the hearing that personnel board has to have. Personnel board has to have a hearing on the, okay. and that's required. So you got to work on your, make sure you fit all your dot, your, your. Got it. Thank you. Shapes in the right places, so to speak. Yeah. Dot I's, cross T's. I don't yeah. know, pick an analogy. Right. You know, I'm coming in favor of what Julie had said earlier that it should be tied in with the closing of the warrant. It I was tied in with the closing of the warrant before and they changed it. Well, it wasn't 60, it's not 60 days anymore. So select board doesn't need to vote anything, right? No, no. No, we're, we're, we're not we're, doing this. So I heard you putting it on there, they've agreed to it. That's out there. Um, we don't have a motion yet for finance. You may want to make a motion. You could stay silent on this, Julie. If you really don't agree with it, you can stay silent on it. Well, we can vote now. We pass this article over. Just, just, just a recommendation from your board. Yep. So, what'd you say, John Pachert? Let's pass over the article and get on to the gender change for the select board. <laughs> uh, Casey, is this controversial? Casey, is this something that you could check on tomorrow to see if we could pull this off ahead of time? Uh, so you could vote it. Capital? As far as with, with right, with Jack on the capital and see if, if we can, uh, you know, hold, hold, a, hold a CIPC movement, uh, hold a CIPC uh, meeting and see if- I can uh, check with them. As far as- if you could, the issue is, is right. We're kind of up against the wall. I can certainly check. On it. Right. Well, I was just wondering if that's something that we could come back to if it works, and if it doesn't, as as was mentioned by the board, just stay silent on it and bring it. You know, see what happens at annual town meeting. I was actually pretty happy with this year from the perspective of I thought the CIPC did a lovely job of prioritizing everything and giving us a really nice list to work from. So I thought that worked great, but annual town meeting is later. So maybe if annual town meeting was a normal time, that would be a, a bridge too far or something. But I, I really do feel that two weeks is too close because it does not give time for the finance committee to incorporate that into the overall budget and um, let us look at the, how that all goes together. Um, I'm okay with skipping this. I don't hear anybody, I don't hear anybody making a motion, right? All right, so we're gonna skip this one. We'll address it again next Tuesday if it comes up again next Tuesday. Um, what's next? Article 14. General bylaw change gender neutral language for select board. Do we have a motion? Okay. Go ahead. So we'll move. Second. All right. We're ready for your discussion, Casey. So basically, we need to do this at the recommendation of Bond Council to clarify a change that the select board has made or made several years ago. They made a change to go to a new gender neutral terminology for themselves, but the bylaws didn't follow that. And so because we're about to do significant bonds in the next month, actually, um, bond council has recommended that we make the change, submit it to the AG so that it, it follows a progression um, in case there's any bond hitch is really what it's for. And because it's 
because select board is seen in both the general bylaws and the zoning bylaws, you had to, we had to go through the whole planning board process for a zoning bylaw change as well. It just means that we're the same board. There's a question when you say select board or board of selectmen, if it's the same group, this is, you know, we did this a while ago, but we didn't actually follow through with the change in the bylaws. So it's basically housekeeping. Okay. Any discussion from finance committee folks? Nope. Nope, we're ready for a roll call vote. John Pacherik? Aye. John Pareski? Aye. Jeff Upton? Aye. Jim Cambius? Aye. <clears throat> Julie Chalfin, aye. That passes 500. We have a motion for Article 15. I thought we weren't going to do zoning. No, they're both. This um, is just the language again. This is gender neutral, changing yep. select board to select select board of selectmen. To oh, I'm looking at an old printout. Okay. Yep. I'm, old. Oh, God, I'm sorry. 18 on the old one. My bad. Do we have a motion? Do we have a second? I'll second. I'll second it. Too late. I got it. <laughs> um, okay. Any discussion? Nope. Yeah. All right. John Paterk. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalfant. Aye. That passes five zero zero. So I do have a question, by the way. How come these two articles are not simply one article? Because they can't be. They're two different sections of the bylaw. Jim. The zoning. Okay. Zoning's got to be separate. Yep. They have different um, vote requirements. Like the zoning has a two thirds majority. Does the other one need a two thirds majority also? No, it's actually a simple majority. Yeah. Okay. Okay. The general bylaw change. Thank you. All right, so it's 720. The rest of this is zoning. Zoning, and I can't get stuff. to my stuff to get this to you, <laughs> to show it to you. I'm sorry, I'm very frustrated. Um. So sounds like we need a motion to adjourn. I think we're ready to adjourn. I'm seconding so John's tomorrow. motion to adjourn. All right, we have a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? Second. Okay, I actually have discussion before we vote on this. Tomorrow night, six p.m. is yes. uh, uh, is the what is the pre-town meeting where all of this Info stuff session. we do not have a posted meeting um but we can be there i'm going to unpost the meeting for thursday we'll delete that we will have a meeting next tuesday which is i think the first of june at 5 p.m and at that point we will tackle the zoning bylaws plus that one that we just split into two um all right Anything else we need to talk about before we adjourn? Julie? And very quickly, the the uh, meeting is outside tomorrow night at Frontier? No. No, oh, no the recorder no. got it wrong, Jeff. <laughs> the recorder has gotten it wrong twice. It's a Zoom meeting. Oh, my God. I cannot so believe now it's a Zoom meeting. We're going to have to inform people of that some way, shape, or form because we I have read it. We've been paper trying. And We're trying. We really are. <laughs> okay. I read it at Frontier I read it saying go home. As far as, being, <laughs> as far as being outside at Frontier, now, now we're back to a Zoom meeting. Yep. So what we did was it was planned to be a Zoom meeting. It got confused when it was put into the paper for Monday. We called them Monday morning and had them um, revisit it. So they printed a change, but they printed the wrong date. It, it was a series of just little cluster bombs going off. So, And then we did put it on social media, I think... Trevor's actually thrown it up or will be throwing it up on Deerfield now to try to get the word out because people were confused. And we didn't intend for that to happen. What we sent out for a press release said that the meeting was on Zoom. But I guess I, lesson learned, you only send one press release subject at a time. All right. And maybe to another newspaper. 
<laughs> okay, let's move on. We have Somebody a, want to start a, a second newspaper? to adjourn. <laughs> Is there any further discussion? Go ahead, Brenda. Um, before we adjourn, last week when we met and you approved the um, FY22 compensation plan, you all wanted to see where everyone was going to fit on the FY23 plan. So I plugged in quickly this afternoon, just kind of highlighted where people would sit on this new plan. Can I show that to you? Yes, please. Do you want to see it tonight? Would you prefer not? I, I'd like to just look at it really quick, if that's okay. I mean, it is it is a really quick little thing. I'd like to see it too. Yeah. Okay. Let's do it. Well, point of order, technically, yeah. by Robert's rules, you got to withdraw the motion to adjourn because you can't have any other discussion. Yeah, you're right. I would draw, right, I would draw my motion to adjourn. I would draw my second or whoever did it. So according to our consultants, um, and based on where people are right now, this is where individuals would sit on the new plan in fiscal 23. And you have grade A with the landfill attendance and, the, and one library aid, and you can see where they fit on this. They're a little, the uh, landfill attendance are a little higher than um, most of the people on this plan. But I just wanted to show you, if you go to grade B, which used to be our grade two, most people here are gonna end up at step one or when there's one person that would end up at step three. If you go to um, grade C, which used to be grade three, then you can see where people are all over the board on this. But most people, and I think you can see all the way down, I don't even have to go through all this, but you can see all the way down, most people are fitting in, in grade one through five. Um, there is one outlier at grade 10, and that is um, our uh, police admin assistant. But everybody else, um, I know you were all concerned about where people were gonna fit on this new schedule, but she planned this so that they weren't huge jumps based on where they're at now. Brenda, could you do us a favor and could you uh, give us a side by side for FY22 and FY23 so we can do a comparison on what FY people going from FY22 to FY23? I'd, um, I'd like to see those numbers. Yes. Yeah, I'll do something simple for the next meeting so you can see it. Because I, I have a, a very complicated looking spreadsheet from the consultant, but it's yeah. hard to parse through and and it and it has names on it and everything. So I think we'll just I'll I'll do a simple simple spreadsheet okay. for next week. All right, that would be great. And and just to confirm, the only thing that we have recommended has been the FY twenty two salary schedule correct that's correct yes, yes. okay yes. just want to make sure can you because that scrolling? fy23 could change can you continue to scroll down i sure can so there's seven classes right that's correct where there used to be six right okay In the seven classes, that was the the seventh class was added again for why? It was wow. added to recognize a level of statutory responsibility or supervision over uh, a lot of disciplines. You know, a, a, a higher level yeah. of management responsibility, Jeff. Yep. No, I just wanted to confirm that. I. That's what my understanding was last time. Okay. 
All right, is that good or does anybody else have any other questions? Okay, then I will have something for you for next week uh, to show the comparison. Thank you very much, Brenda. That was very helpful. You're welcome. Yeah, thank you. I make a motion the Finance Committee adjourn. Second. I'll second it. All right. Uh, John Paturik. Aye. John Pareski. Aye. Jeff Upton. Aye. Jim Cambius. Aye. Julia Chalvin. Aye. We are adjourned at 7.29 p.m. Good night, everybody. Good Bye. night. Thanks. Good night now. Time for Thank you all so much. I make a motion that the select board adjourn. Second that motion. Uh, Wait, she's got a hand up. I need the select board to not adjourn. <gasps> Come on. I no, we have an item meeting. unanticipated. <laughs> okay. And Kevin's been sitting would, here waiting for it. Take I would the draw floor, my Kevin. second. I, I just would, forgot I was on mute. <laughs> Carolyn withdraws her motion. I, I did. I did. Oh, okay. Great. All right. We're going to talk about the lawnmowers, right? Yeah, if you want. <laughs> Not the lawnmower, the, the person pushing the lawnmower. Yes, correct. Kevin, can you just explain it? I can't get to any of my email or anything right now. Okay. Uh, basically, what I'm doing is I'm requesting a temporary summer help. Um, the person will come on uh, June 1st. And the person should be gone by September 1st. <laughs> excuse me, at a rate of $13.50 an hour, um, no benefits, um, as summer help, pushing a lawnmower, weed whacking. Uh, yeah. That motion? I'll second that, Carolyn. Okay, uh, do you have any further discussion? Just assume you have it in the budget. And you're okay, yep, yeah. so, so, so to, final, to finalize this, Yes, it is in the budget. And second off is the person that has um, applied and has passed uh, the interview pending uh, physical and drug screen on Friday uh, would be um, Adam Coffin. Oh, great. That's great. Okay. That's good. Yeah. All I got now. Thank you. Any other discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. I, Dave Wolfram. Motion Thank carried you. three zero zero. Thank you. Anything else, Case? No. Nope. Are you not sure? till tomorrow? Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, what time is tomorrow's meeting? By the way, just tomorrow's to... at six, and six we're going to start with zoning, okay. and then move on to the financial articles because I think the zoning is going to take a little bit more time it to is. explain. Right. And Brenda, I've talked to Brenda, Kevin, and John, and they, I, well, I talked to Brenda and Kevin, and I think John, I mentioned it in passing. Um, it might give us a little time for them to get back from their annual meeting. Yep. Sounds good. Okay. Your district meetings at seven o'clock. So that's right. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So I'll be finalizing that books, that the two booklets, I split it into two buckets. I'll be finalizing that um, tomorrow. Now that I have finalized language from a couple of things. Okay. So, and I, and I will want you guys to vote the warrant if at all yes. possible. Do that. Okay. Our so next our, next Lechman's meeting is June second, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, do you do you want us to come down? What, you want us to sign the warrant th by Thursday noon, right? Yeah. Okay. Yep. All right. I just wanted to make sure you knew. If that changes, I will let you know. Okay. Um, I just can't get to my email to find something right now, and I want to talk to Barbara. Well, Barbara, was I, just, I, I just wanted to make sure that we got in there before noontime on Thursday. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. No, I appreciate that. Thank you, Carolyn. No, I just wanted to verify it. Great. Well, now I'll give a motion to adjourn. And I will second it this time. <laughs> Any further discussion? No. no. Thank you all. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye, Carolyn. Aye, Trevor McDaniel. Aye, Dave Wolfram. Motion adjourned. Carried.